Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to ask, who doesn't believe in evolution? Is it the right or the left? Now, as you know, I'm an evolutionary biologist. I'm sort of a theoretical cognitive scientist, but really I'm an evolutionary biologist. Um, most of my research concerns why we evolved or why animals evolved to be the way they are, why animals across many phyla you know, uh, broad sweeps across uh, all animal kind have as many limbs or digits as they do, why your eyes face forward, why we have color vision, uh, why your fingers get pruny when wet, um, and then, and there's uh, many others. And then in the more cultural domain, and this, uh, the question is why did we, um, why has culture shaped artifacts like writing to look the way it is, or music, or speech to sound like it, like it does? Um, all of these require understanding that through large-scale selective forces with large numbers of creatures or large numbers of peoples, over time, great design can happen. This is sort of part and parcel of what folks like us who study design um, uh, uh, just take for granted. And we don't take it for granted, but it's just part of everyday life. We understand that these networks with no designer can create amazing design. It's not just amazing, it's the most brilliant design that exists in the universe, it is built by natural selection, and then much more recently by cultural selection. The reason you know, designing writing to fit, to I mean, harness to fit our visual innate object recognition capabilities is what, is what allows us to read at all. All right, now the right is historically, stereotypically not uh, on board with natural selection. Now, this doesn't describe most people on the right, but it's part of the stereotype of being on the right. And I certainly get emails from people over the last 20, you know, 15 years of uh, how can you say that, um, you know, this, that, you know, uh, we, have, we see illusions because it's actually a, a design feature that helps us um, correct for delays from when light hits your eyes to the time it takes to build a perception. These are why we see uh, perceptual illusions. Um, God did this, you know, God designed this, it's not due to natural selection. Now, the sort of, so that's invariably folks on the right. And uh, it's certainly a stereotype that the left bangs uh, on the heads of those on the right. But uh, before you start imagining that the left is pro-natural selection, or pro-understanding these kinds of forces, they're in fact not, and it's not even new. Um, it goes back at least uh, 40 uh, years um, that the left has uh, in this, you know, Steven Pinker's Blank Slate is a great place to start if you haven't been aware, aware of this, if you're not aware of this. The left, uh, with starting with sociobiology and E.O. Wilson, and E.O. Wilson just said, look, let's start applying all of the same evolutionary biology design principles that we've done for all of these other animals, and let's start applying to human, to, to human psychology and to humans, so socio uh, groups of humans and, and humans together, trying to understand why we evolved to have the kinds of um, uh, psychology that we have and, and the social relationships we have and all of these kinds of things, but understand it in a biological design context. And then later evolutionary psychology, this is capital evolutionary, capital you know, E and P psychology. I, I would consider myself a, a cognitive scientist who does evolutionary stuff, but I'm not an evolutionary psychologist because that really is a term of art that refers to a particular kind of stuff. Anyway, evolutionary psychology after that, as well as any evolutionary, evolutionarily based cognitive science has often then been attacked by the same folks that, and it started with with uh, E.O. Wilson and sociobiology. And so, what? Who was attacking them? Well, I won't get into the specific names of the folks, but these were. Far, I mean, E.O. Wilson himself was a, a far left of socialist himself, but he was attacked by those on the left because he was. When you start to suggest that humans may have a nature, that there is such a thing as human nature that there are instincts that we have. We're not just universal blank slates that can be shaped this way and shaped that way. Um, this goes against a kind of intuition that a lot of people, it's not necessary intuition, certainly you can believe in socialism and communism without believing that, but nevertheless, um, certain strains of socialism had this idea that everybody is blank slates and you can raise them in this world and treat them all as equals and you know no one's richer or poorer than any of the others. And if you start saying, no, look, that we all are filled with instincts that make us human, there's a human nature, and not to mention that, there's probably variability across people in terms of which particular, how good you are in various kinds of you know multi-dimensional aspects, then you're in some sense violating this intuition that a lot of folks on the left had that you somehow need to have, and I don't even see why you need to have it. But, they felt that they needed to have this belief that we're all blank slates and that we're different than the other animals who are piles of instincts. And I've argued in you know, other uh, 
other science moments that no, we're just as much piles of instincts as everybody else. Um, so there's this leftist based antipathy or knee jerk reaction to natural selection when it's pointed towards human psychology. But unfortunately, it's it's long gone far beyond that. And, and so even when I've done um, uh, research, for example, on pruny fingers in 2011 or so, Roman Weber and myself, we published uh, evidence that the reason that we get pruny when wet is in fact, when you look at the morphology and how they're structured on your hands, and they're actually optimized, they're exactly the peculiar morphology that you expect if they're optimized for grip. So when you're grabbing uh, things in wet conditions, they channel out the water, they squirt the water out through these channels quickly and efficiently so that you don't hydroplane. Now this was, so um, we have morphological evidence and others have since found behavioral, like uh, actual sort of a motor kind of uh, uh, evidence that shows um, great benefit to it as well. But the reaction from the science journalist community on Twitter back then was so remarkable. This is a very far left group of folks who um, whether there's a person on the left or a person on the right in the office, it's just very echo chamber of far left, which is also part of why uh, COVID hysteria happened because the journalists uh, talking about it are all part of an echo chamber, have all been part of an echo chamber all along. So the reaction from this community to a, not even a psycho psychology based design argument, just a very rain tready argument. I mean, it's just like rain like tires in some sense, really boring still there's a it's kind of bled out from uh, an antipathy of natural selection in sociobiology and evolutionary psychology and it bled out to the idea that no any hypothesis about design is inherently unscientific it's inherently and i was attacked online and people started i had only a couple of people that i've ever had to block i mute certain people but i never block people only a couple times I've ever had to block a couple of people is because they kept attacking and attacking in barbs and barbs and I could they just wouldn't they wouldn't stop I had to actually block them the only time that ever happened was through um, through this this experience with this hypothesis on non psychological evolutionary evolutionary design based stuff so what is their argument in this case well they don't explicitly tie it to the psychology stuff but their attitude is that if you make a hypothesis about design at all, about biological design. They call it a just-so story. Now, what does a just-so story mean? A just-so story, it's getting kind of hard to see me there. Um, a just-so story is referring um, uh, to just-so stories uh, by the brilliant English um, uh, writer, his name, I'm having a mental block, uh, lived much of his life in India. And he has a lot of, he has a book um, called Gesso Stories, which is the story of, let's say, how the elephant got a trunk and it's a crocodile grabbed onto a pre-elephant's nose and stretched it. And so explaining how leopards got their spots and all the, the, these different kinds of things. Um, and so, of course, they're just silly stories, and, but it's well-weaved and it's a, he's, he's a great writer, um, brilliant writer. And so they refer to it as these Gesso Stories, which are cartoony, uh, fun stories about how design happened. And so it's a, it's a, it's a slight to say, oh, those are just so stories. You're just making up bullshit. And I've talked about in um, probably around 50, Science Moment 50, about several of the ways that one goes about providing scientific evidence for design hypotheses. And it's a very different kind of uh, strategy than when you're going uh, to, uh, testing mechanistic hypotheses. So uh, there's the, the antipathy has spread to all design hypotheses. And it's as if the notion of teleology, the notion that there's purpose, teleology means purposeness, um, they, they believe that there cannot be design in biology because, well, that would seem to require a designer. So if you hypothesize design, oh, that's just totally a non-scientific thing. You can't, there's no, there's no design there's, because it's natural selection, which misses the entire point of natural selection. What's brilliant about natural selection. The reason that we remember Darwin and we will always, we will remember Darwin is not that he said, oh my gosh, there's no design. No, he explained how it is that all of this design around us, which we cannot possibly not see. It's just, it's blaring. It's just piles of design all around us. That design can come to us, come to the world without a designer, right? That's the point. There's no need to hypothesize a designer. There's no centralized force that did this. That's the entire point. 
And there's somehow the left has come to believe that no, if you start hypothesizing there's design, then it means there must be a God, some centralized force that did it. And I think this is just as dangerous or much more dangerous than the kind of anti-natural selection folks uh, you know, that you have sometimes on the right. At least the folks on the right, yeah, they're getting natural selection wrong, but it's almost just a metaphor. They believe there's some centralized designer who did it, and he or she, whatever, some kind of, it, but it's just, it's just saying, it's in some sense that the religion is saying, it's giving you ex an excuse to say, it's out of our hands, we didn't do it, it's some other force, some centralized force from God that did it. Um, but it's taking it out of human hands. It's taking it out of, it's saying we should be, uh, we shouldn't have the hubris to, to imagine that humans could ever understand this or do this. It's outside of, of human uh, kin altogether. Whereas if you have an anti-natural selection viewpoint, anti-design, um, the, the kind of way that anti-design finds itself on the left is that no, there's no design at all. And if there, there is a design, it's because there does, there's a designer. But of course, there's no designer for natural selection, which means that it's somewhere in their bones, they seem to have incorrectly come to the belief that you can't get design without a designer. Now, if you believe that, you want to live in a society with lots of design. We want things designed so that we're all wealthy and healthy and, and have safety nets and have lots of great things that we all would like out of society. Where do those things come from? You can't have those kinds of things designed for us without a designer. And so, Where's that designer gonna be? It's gonna be centralized government. Where are you gonna find truth in society? How is it that a bunch of, you know, hundreds of millions or billions of us are gonna end up with finding true things? How can it be that truth, is it that the networks can somehow end up to be designed such that they find the truth over? No, um, yeah, if they're designed to find the truth over time, it's only because centralized fact check or centralized government is controlling these things to bring us the truth to bring us wealth through the free markets, to bring us the truth through free expression, through, through expression, through controlling these networks. So on the left, the viewpoint is, is, is against free markets because the free market could never be designed, have create designed things. Social networks could never create designed things as find and discover complex truths. So that's the danger um, of being anti-natural, select anti um evolution in some sense and misunderstanding it from the left is because it bleeds out into how they think about the world. They can't wrap their heads somewhere in their bodies. They can't wrap their heads around the idea that truth can come by virtue of all of us working together freely. They can't get wrap their heads around the idea that free markets, a bunch of free people with no design can lead to, um, it can be what brings us wealth. So, both sides have problems with natural selection. The right often just doesn't believe in it, believes that it's God, but in some sense, this is roughly safe. You know, the, the downside is it ends up sometimes, you know, stereotypically saying, hey, kids shouldn't be taught natural selection, that's right. But kids will figure it out anyway, eventually, you know, online. The danger on the left, though, is that those folks um, don't, they pretend to believe in natural selection, but they don't get it. They don't really understand the fact that, that Natural selection has created teams and teams of design all around us. We're just piled, filled to the brim with the design, and that happens and it has to be understood. And the same kinds of things happen in societies themselves, and they're all due to freedom, not due to centralized control. And that was your science moment.